Hello everybody! Are you ready to paint an ugly Christmas sweater ornament? I'm ready. I hope you guys have your ornaments. I hope you guys have... Um... There we go. Sorry, I was getting some feedback there. Um, yeah, hope you got your ornament and I hope you're ready. Got your paper adhered. All right. Hi, Debbie from New York. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much. Um, I think this will be a pretty fun little ornament to do. I do ornaments every year. Um, I like to do them and uh, give them to family and a few friends. And uh, I normally write a message on the back and date it and everything. So um, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun for me. And I thought this one would be a super, super cute one because there is so much you can do with an ugly Christmas sweater. I'm telling you. Hi, Dee Dee. Thank you for joining. And um, I think everyone does ugly Christmas sweaters. Well, most people do. And some families have contests. So wouldn't this be a cute little uh, prize to give away their own little ugly Christmas sweater ornament <laughs> to win the contest with? I think it would be so much fun. So um, uh, I'm just going to give another couple of seconds here to uh, make sure everyone knows that I have gone live. Um, you can get the packet for all of my Christmas sweater ornaments on my website, and I'll show you that to you here in a minute. Um, hopefully you've got some fun paper to adhere to your ornament. I'm going to show you how I do it. It's um, There's different ways that you can decoupage your paper on. I'm just going to show you the way that works best for me. Um, I think other teachers and other people do it different ways. So you find a method that works really well for you and you use that method uh, when it comes to decoupaging on your paper. Um, this one, I have just done it this way for so many years. It just works for me and I've not ever had any issues uh, of bubbling up or tearing my paper or anything like that. So um, it's a method that I like to do and I'm going to show it to you. So. Alrighty, I'm going to make myself small and put myself in the corner so we can, oops, wrong one, let me do that again, here we go, I'll get me moved, just hang on a second, get me up in the corner so you can still see me. Um, this is my packet that you can get on my website. Now in my packet, it's got all of these line drawings for uh, all my Christmas ornaments that I have done for the ugly sweater one this year. I have still have lots of ideas of ones that I would like to do. Um, so, you know, you can be so creative with this. I love it. Anyway, uh, this packet has the written and the picture step-by-steps um, for these two ornaments right here. Um, let me pull them over here. One is done with scrapbooking paper and some fun tinsel stuff, some uh, raised elements on it, and this one is just a painted one. So I'm gonna show you how to do both of them on a video I think comes out Friday on my YouTube channel. So watch from that. Hello, Bonnie. Hello, Dee Dee. Yes, some craft habits are hard to break. So <laughs> I don't want you to break any that work for you, but if they're not working for you, try a different method and see how that works out for you. So um, anyway, uh, lanalam.com. Now for this one right here, you can get the free um, PDF download that has the line drawing for the deer and the paints that are listed and um, a color photograph. Now underneath this video in the description box also has the paints listed that I used and anything else that uh, is pertinent to this project that we're going to be doing, but um, if you want the line drawing for it, just go to lanalam.com and um, get that. So there I am, lanalam.com right there. Okay, so I am going to bring over a few things into the screenshot here. So I don't know how many of you are going to be painting along with me. 
but um, I'll pick up my paper. <laughs> I'm going to show you how I decoupage. Now there's a couple of things that you might want to do before you begin decoupaging onto your surface. So one is paint the back and the sides. You can bring your paint on up around the edges on the front if you want especially if you're using a color that is similar to the background go ahead and bring it up just a little bit onto the front of the surface and um, that way when you adhere your paper to it um, if there's a, a little gap anywhere at all um, then it will not be noticeable because the, the background will be similar to the background of the paper hi Jackie thanks for joining from Northern California very nice to have you so I've already cut out my paper but I wanted to show you I cut just right outside of the line okay I took my ornament and traced it on the back of my scrapbook paper and I cut just outside of that line that's gonna make it a little bit bigger than the surface um, and I would rather have it a little bit bigger because if I don't get it adjusted quite right then all I have to do is trim off the excess. But if I if I cut it too small, if I cut inside that line, then it might it, there's a possibility it could be just a little bit too small. So best to cut just barely outside that line, or cut right on the line should be okay. But I always cut just right outside of it, so it will be just a little bit big. So this is the paper that I have chosen for today. So I'm going to show you how I get my um, paper on here. You could also go ahead and put your line drawing on this before you decoupage it um, so it's already on there. Um, that's just a tip of something that you can do. You don't have to do it that way. I don't normally do it that way, but I have. Um, it's just a great way to already be ready to go as soon as you've trimmed your paper. It's dry and you've trimmed it. So. Um, you want to use some decoupage medium. Now these are my two favorite ones right here. It's extremely important that you have a decoupage medium that is a matte or flat or no shine in it whatsoever. It's got to be matte. It's, it's got to be no shine. <laughs> I can't express that enough. If you have anything that's satin or gloss or anything at all, uh, an outdoor decoupage may have some shine to it that is going to resist your paint and keep it from sticking to your paper so you want to have a, a decoupage medium that is matte uh, these are my two favorite ones uh, this is a matte medium and this one is for napkin uh, so anything that is a matte finish will work well uh, for doing this all right, so I am going to adhere mine. I'm going to put glue, the decoupage medium, on the surface. Now the edges are one where you want to make sure you get enough, but not so much that it oozes over the side because that causes a whole nother issue when you go to trim it. If you've got piles of glue there, you're trying to cut through the glue. So you want to have enough on the edges. That's where the paper will lift. If it does lift, it's an easy fix. You just go back when it's dry, take a brush with some, some of the glue and stick it under there and repress it back down and let it dry. Super, super easy to fix. You don't really have to stress out about it. So I put glue on my surface and I put glue on the back of my paper. Now there are other um, designers out there that take their paper and get it wet on the back instead of applying the glue to it. That is a way that you can do it as well, but um, that's never worked well for me. So that's why I say if you have a method that you like to use, then um, use that method. So I'm going to grab a large flat brush. Well, it's a three-quarter inch flat brush. And uh, get it wet. I I'm going to go down into my decoupage. Normally I dump this out onto a paper plate, but I'm just going to go for it right here and apply a nice coat. I don't want it to slip over the edges, but I do want to have nice coverage on here. The entire surface. Now while I paint 
or paint while I apply some to my paper it's going to give that a little bit of time to tack up which is good and so I'm going to apply some to my paper here get a nice good coat on there we want this to stick well you don't have to have it oozing <laughs> with the glue but you want it to be on there nicely all right, so now I'm just going to take it and lay it on top. Now, I'm not going to give any pressure to push the paper down because once I start pushing it down, it's going to stick, and I want to be able to move it if I need to adjust it any. So I'm going to just sort of lay all the elements down and see if it is where I need it to be. And if it looks good... Then we're just going to press it down. This is such a small surface, we can do it with our hands. Just press it all down nice and smoothly. I like to rub along the edges and make sure that those are sticking down. And do it all the way around and really press it. Now, if you're going to get bubbles, you're going to feel them right now. And it's generally going to be in a place where you either have a a lot of glue in one place and it's raised it up in that case when it dries it should flatten out or it's going to be a place where you didn't get enough glue and so some air has developed in there so you can fix those when it dries by uh, taking just a little straight pin something that you can make a tiny little hole a little decoupage on your finger and rub it into that bubble and it should flatten it out I've never had one that didn't flatten out so and this again is where if if you like to use the damp have your paper damp you know like dunk it in water and then lay it on here and smooth it out I, that has just never worked well for me but like I said if it works for you then do it that way do what works best for you and now I'm just going to apply a coat of decoupage medium on the top and you want this to completely dry it won't really take too long for it to dry, but it uh, needs to be dry before you trim it. So trimming it is the next step once it's dry. Um, I can take this one and dry it with my heat tool and get it ready for you. If you are painting along, that's what I want you to do, is dry it with your heat tool and get it dry. This one I'm going to set aside clean the glue off of here so I won't be laying it in glue because I have paint at the back although it won't hurt it it's just a finish so um, I'm going to set this aside and bring the one that I already did so that I can show you how I'm going to finish trimming it if I can get it okay all right so this is um, the same um, paper that I put on the other one um, I just found a paper that looked like it would make a nice, ugly Christmas sweater. I couldn't find this paper when I went back to uh, get paper to um, do my other one. So, All right, so this one I have trimmed on up to the collar. So what I use is a nice, sharp blade, and I really like this blade. This particular knife because it has an extremely thin blade um, you can break it off at these lines that are on it it has a thing that comes on the back of it but I lost mine <laughs> that you can use to break it off so I just use pliers now and just break it off I, I put my pliers right at the line let's see there we go right at the line and snap it off and that gives me a nice sharp point I just have broke this off the other day so I know it's a nice sharp point. Now I'm going to lay it next to my um, ornament here. And I'm going to very, very slightly tilt it out. Just slightly. And then cut along that. Okay. I know it didn't cut through up here. I could feel it when I was cutting it. But it didn't cut through right along that edge I'm on a cutting mat be sure you have a cutting mat down because you don't want to um, cut your tabletop or anything important We've got a little bit down here and this trims it up 
just so nicely and get you a nice smooth edge. Now if for some reason in trimming it you got some little roughness on your edges you can take just a uh, file, a sanding um, emery board and take it along your edges just very lightly and this will smooth out your edges and keep it from having any sharp places or any places where maybe your knife wasn't quite sharp enough or wasn't tilted enough um, and maybe tore the paper or your paper wasn't dry before you started cutting which I have done before I just get so anxious to start painting that I you know shred my paper edges so you know you want to make sure that your edges are nice when you get ready to start okay now we're ready to put on our pattern so I'm going to grab my pattern up here and um, lay it on here wherever you want it to be on your sweatshirt I'm not putting it exactly on there where I had it before, but I'm going to tape this. My pattern is bigger than my surface, so I'm going to tape it to my table so that it doesn't move. Put my graphite paper. I've got a piece of gray graphite paper. Shiny side is the side with the graphite on it. The dull side is the back. Don't do like I did last time. And put it on there upside down. Of course with white it's a little bit harder to tell. And then we're just going to trace around our lines. We don't need the eyes on there. And I wanted to mention that in my packet list I listed a couple of colors in there. The color bright blue and leaf green. And those colors are for something I may add at the end. So I've got my line drawing on there. I can move that out of the way and my graphite out of the way. Um, you can bring your line drawing back in later when you paint the eyes on, but I don't really think you'll need to. Um, you can just put your eyes wherever they look good to you. Okay, I'm going to bring my easel in here. Get it up a little bit easier for you guys to see and for me to see. And I'm going to have this guy close by so because I did not write myself out any instructions <laughs> on how to paint this. So um, I know what colors I used but uh, instructions not so much. All right, so brushes, you're going to need some kind of little scruffy brush to rub on the cheeks. I've got a two round, uh, an eight and a 12 flat. A 10 would be fine. Or just the eight could work for you. Um, that's another two round. Oh, that's a 10 liner and a 3 8 inch angle. And it was a 3 quarter inch brush that I used to um, put the uh, decoupage medium on. All right, let's get the palette camera up here. And I've got my little reindeer guy up here so you can kind of see where we're going. Have my paper towel on my palette because last time it kept wanting to go in and out of focus. So, all right, hope there's going to be some of you painting along with me today, but this will be here forever. And don't forget your free line drawing with a free photo. Um, on how it looks with the paints and everything is right there on my website. So this um, background is a little bit more vibrant than my previous one. This one that I did right here. So it might take a little bit more paint to cover this up. So we're going to paint in the... Um, oh, get you on camera. There we go. Okay, focus. There we go. Okay. Uh, we're going to paint in the deer. 
and you can either go around the nose or go right over the nose and come back and add the nose back on. I'm just going to paint right over it and then just draw, draw an oval in there. I'm going to have to add white to this um, so that it will cover up that paper. Now you could undercoat with a gray as well. And then come back in with your top layers. So I'm just mixing the white and the cocoa together so we can get some paint on here. I don't expect this ornament to take a long time to make. Uh, that's another thing I like about them. They are very fast to make up because it's not, um, you know, it's just a fun project. It's, it's not anything that requires a lot of detail on it. All right, let's paint our antlers in, and I'm going to go to my two round for that. And to get some burnt umber out, and I'm going to mix some burnt umber with some white so that we can cover up that um, background color. So just mix a little bit together. Um, this will make kind of a, a um, can't think of the word I want to say, a pastel -y brown, I guess. And just find your lines and paint them in. Hi Heidi, thank you for joining me. So, are any of you painting along today or are you just watching today? I hope you're going to paint along or paint it later. So much fun. I paint ornaments up every single year, so. You could give this guy a scarf, have him wearing a scarf if you want him to have a scarf on. Okay, this one should be dry now. Let's see how the cocoa is going to look. Just going straight into cocoa here. Not too bad. We'll have to put a couple of coats on here. You can still see a little bit of the background coming through, but I think by the time we get our nose on and all of our layers on, it will be just fine. I'm going to go all the way out to that line that I put on here. Um, you can erase it off of here, but you have to be careful that you don't erase hard because you can um, erase through your paper. So when I'm painting on paper, I generally try to um, paint over the line. Normally I would paint up to it and then erase it. So we'll have to do another coat on there. I'm going to spritz my palette over here with some water. I like to have water on my palette for um, when I need to grab some clean water. All right, let's see if the burnt umber. I'm actually going to mix burnt umber and cocoa together because I don't want these to be super dark. They are going to end up being really, really dark in the end, but um, let's not make them super dark to start out with because then we don't have anywhere to go. So this is cocoa and burnt umber, probably just an equal mix here. And this is covering up really nicely. Oh, I forgot to paint his ears in. We're going to have to get his ears painted in. I made his ears darker, so I will probably paint them in the same colors that I'm using on the uh, antlers. All right, um, Debbie's just watching. Jackie's just watching. 
Dee Dee, you didn't know it was live till you got here. That's fine. This will be on my YouTube channel, so you can go grab your free PDF and paint along when you have a chance to. And I'm always available for questions. Lana Lamb at gmail dot uh, Lana Lamb at gmail dot com. Um, let's undercoat the ears here. That's the white and whatever paint I had on my brush, I just picked up a little bit of white so we could get an undercoat on here. So that brown that I was painting in up there was still in my brush. You have ornaments ready to go. Oh yes, good, good. Oh, you love the tote bag, yes. The tote bag tote bag it turned out so cute here let me wide angle out so you can see the tote bag this is just a tote bag from Hobby Lobby I don't know if they sell them individually or if they come in a package of two I can't remember it's been a while since I, I bought any but um, yeah I, I didn't even paint the sweater on here because I did the one that had the black background so I really just did the detail and the bow and then added the other stuff and then that's the stencil ugly Christmas sweater stencil you can get on my website but how fun is that? I love it. You can um, paint that up and then uh, put your ornament inside of it for a gift. <laughs> I think it's such a cute idea. And I used fabric paints on mine, but on my bag. But you can use regular acrylic paints or um, if you have a fabric medium, that's going to help the paint stick better. Um, so you can mix it with your paint or just apply it to the area that you're going to be painting before you put the paint on with just regular acrylic paint you'll probably want to mix it if you're using fabric paint um, you can just use it as a, a foundation for your paint so and the ideas are endless for those tote bags as well oh my gosh you could you could really ugly up a tote bag so easily so easily. All right, I'm going to paint the antlers in with my second coat of burnt umber and cocoa mixed together. We've got that undercoat, so technically this would be our third coat, but as you go with each coat, you tend to use less and less paint because your layers after that, you're just kind of filling in any gaps that the previous layer didn't get, so it's, they should go fairly quickly. And then we'll give a coat to the ears. this same mix here and I'm just going to paint the outside edge there because we're going to put pink color on the inside so just give him the outside edge of his ears we'll come back and add the uh, second layer on there in a moment I'm going to draw his nose on. Now this is where, make sure your paint is dry, you can go in and put your pattern back on and um, do your nose. Um, this one is kind of more of a round nose when I painted it, although when I transferred the pattern on it was more of an oval nose. So you could do round or oval, either one will work just fine. Um, so we'll just see how it draws in here. Well, it's hard to say what color that is. <laughs> I mean, what, what shape that is. I'll get my words out right here in a minute. Okay, I'm going to add a quick second coat on the ears so everything will be ready to go. Hi, Glenda. I'm glad you made it. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Okay, before I paint the nose in, I want to start doing a little bit of shading on the deer. So I'm going to grab my 3 8 inch angle brush and get some burnt umber on the toe of this brush. Now, if there's anyone who doesn't know how to do a float, let me know. I'll try to explain it to you the best I can. I have lots of videos out there. Um, 
showing you how to do it and I need some water paint is very dry here I'm gonna go around the nose we're gonna paint it in in a minute I'm gonna grab a mop brush which I do not have handy so I can mop that just a little bit kind of kind of helps smooth it out did go around the whole nose. And don't worry if you lose your shape. When, you, when we come in and paint in the nose, we can fix the shape. Okay. Here, along the top, I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. I want the top of the head to be darker than the lower part, or top of the face, whatever. Just gently mop that. You have to do it before it's dry. Your mop brush is always dry. Gentle pressure, just a slight little dabbing and blending, and then you clean it off on a wet spot on your paper towel, and then dry it on a dry spot. Okay, come down this way just a little bit more. We're going to darken the top of the head more. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight on the bottom. I'm going to get some white and just a tiny bit of cocoa. Cocoa is what we um, based it in with. I can't get it to mix. There we go. Just going to mix a lighter color than what we based it in. Too much paint, so I just touch my paper towel to remove some of that. And that's a little bit too light, so I'm going to grab a little bit more cocoa and bring that lightness down there. Okay, top of his head is not quite dry. If it feels cool to the touch, not dry. So let it dry. Okay, I'm going to grab some of my Santa Red. If I can get it open. Oh my gosh, that was really stuck. Santa Red. Okay. And I'm going to grab my 8 flat. I'm going to mix some white in, white and red, to make a pink color for the nose. That's a bright pink. Let me add just a tiny bit of cocoa in there. And that will tone that pink down a little bit. I mean, if you like that bright pink, you can go for that. That, that was really super bright. <laughs> so I'm doing the, the white, the red, and some cocoa. Let's see, Dee Dee, you always have a little bit of trouble with floating. So, um, do you know if it's because your brush might be too dry, too small for the area? I, I like to encourage people to use as large a brush as they can because learning to paint in smaller areas with larger brushes teaches you better brush control. You learn how to manipulate that brush and use that brush instead of the brush using you. So um, do you have any specifics that you could mention or ask me about so that maybe I could give you some tips that might help you? I'm painting in the ears, the inside of the ears with the same color. Oh, it looks so cute already. Such a cutie. All right, I want to do another float of the burnt umber. Um, one important key or tip to floating is to make sure that you have moisture in your brush. You can't float without it. There's just, there's no way. It's not going to happen. <laughs> um, so. 
and blending the water and the paint on your brush to where they come together and meet and make a beautiful blend is another important tip. All right, let's go around his nose again. Second floats help smooth out the first ones. And I'm gonna take my mop brush and just very gently tickle over that and smooth it out. I really want this darkness to come down more on his forehead, so I am going to do that again. Make sure it's dry, because if I go and try this before it dries, I'm going to lift it right off. Um, Dee Dee says, I have to work really hard to get the blend. Even with the mop brush, have trouble with enough water. Yes, enough water. Yeah, that is um, extremely important and really takes practice. Trust me, all of us designers were beginners <laughs> and floating was our nemesis. Um, so I completely understand, but it truly, truly does take practice. And once, once you get your brush loaded correctly the first time, it will stick with you. So the right amount of water, what I do is I, I wake my brushes up in water by fully submerging them and filling every single bristle with water. You can't float if your brush has any dry bristles in it at all. Then I lay it on a paper towel each side of the brush. I lay on the paper towel. It wicks out the excess moisture. Then your brush should be perfectly loaded to load for floating. The corner of the brush, you work it in. If when you're working it on your palette, so let's say you're working a float on in and you've got too much water. Like right there is too much water. It is going to be just it's it's just going to fade away to nothing there are times when you want a sheer float like that and i do use a sheer float a lot in my painting but when you're just loading for a standard float and you go to um, mix it on your brush and it's like water all you have to do is touch your paper towel to your your brush to your paper towel that's going to wick out some of that water then i go back to the exact spot where i was working because I'm, I just wicked out the excess moisture, but I gotta have moisture in my brush when I'm floating. So I go back to that spot where it was just loading nothing but water, and then I can load my brush and get a nice, beautiful, soft, soft float when I paint. So it truly is something that you have to practice, and um, you know, like I said, once you get it, you've got it. So um, practice it. That's that's. That's my greatest tip that I can give you, um, is just keep practicing. Don't give up on it. Okay, I want to put a little bit more pink in the ears. So that's the red and the white and some cocoa. It gives us that muted little pink color. I'm just going to take my mop brush, or not my mop brush, my angle brush, and load it with that color. And come in here and make sure I've got a nice, good edge on the nose. Okay, well, let that dry. Let's go up and work on the antlers while all those pink areas are drying because that's what we're going to be working on next. Um, let's go with some straight burnt umber. Uh, I might need to add some black to this, so I'm going to put some black out. I'll need it here in a minute for his eyes. So just a little drop of black. So I'm not sure the burnt umber is going to show up. So I'm going to, it's showing up a little bit, but I'm still going to add a tiny little bit of black in there. You have to be careful when you're adding black to your colors. I mean, that black can just like take over. So a lot of times I will add, just get a tiny little, I mean the tiniest little dots on the tip of my brush. And then I will um, put the black paint. So I'll, I'll get a little dot and I'll put it over here. 
that's going to take off a little bit of the paint off the tip of my brush. And then I can grab my other color and load. And if I need it a little bit more, I can go back to that little bitty dot that I put there and grab that and put it on. So I went down the left side. I'm going to scoot a little bit of that into the center, not too much. And then next to the head here. I don't want to see a gap between the antlers and the head. <laughs> so don't let there be a gap. All right, let's do the other antler. And I need a little bit of water because my paint is not moving. So it's not moving. So I grabbed a little, that's another reason why I spritz over here. I grab a little drop of water. I take it to my blending spot and I blend it in. And that's going to keep my paint moist. I need to mix some more. A little water. I need some water on the outside edge. Work that water in with the paint. This is not floating. It's not just a grab paint and go. You've got to blend it on your brush. some of that into the center. Okay, while we're working with this color, let's do a little shading on the ears. So we're going to shade right here on the brown part of the ear next to the head. And then along the top. Now, in this area, I've tilted my brush just a little bit because my brush is a bigger brush. I could go down to a quarter inch angle brush, um, but I can manipulate this brush so I can tilt it up just a little bit and still be able to float with it because I've got that moisture in my brush. It's going to keep that paint from, um, you know, just being like a line on there. So, and I don't want to fill this whole area, so another reason why I tilt my brush just a little bit. Okay, it's looking super, super cute. Okay, let's put some red on the nose. I want him to have a bright nose. And this Santa red is a very bright red. I love it. Just going to scoot that up. Now that was called walking a float. Um, so in walking a float, you have your brush loaded with your water and your paint. Having water on the, the side that you don't have paint on, this side right here is the water side. This side, the toe, or one corner if you're using a flat, is the paint side. So um, having that water on there is key to doing a walk-out float. So to do a walk-out float, you're going to lay your brush down and paint where you want it, and then you're laying paint, paint and water down at the same time so you can keep going over into that water area and carry that float as far as you need it to go. But you can't do that if you don't have the water on the water edge of your brush loaded in there and you know blended like you know the toe is blended the water and the paint both have to be in there they have to be blended they have to be in the brush <laughs> so key tip there so let's put some of this in here I'm gonna go along the bottom and next to the um, head. So we're making a cute, cute, cute little ears. Okay, so when I highlighted on these, I just highlighted with white because um, I didn't really like the burnt umber and white mix or the cocoa and white mix. Well, I used it down here, but up on the ears, it was just too bright. I mean, it wasn't the right shade of color. So I'm just going to float a little bit on here. Bring a little bit, just tap a little bit of it in there, give that 
those antlers a little bit of texture. I never paint the same <laughs> on any project. So I get my original one done and then when I teach it or paint it again, it, it's never done the exact same way because I see something else that, oh, that will be so much better if I did it that way. So, you know, and plus I don't remember what I did on my first one. So I'm gonna put a little highlight there and a little highlight there up on my tippy toe. You could use a round brush just for those highlights. Um, that would be okay. So, oh, you didn't know. Is this what you're talking about, DD? The walkout float? Yeah. It's an easy one if you've got paint or uh, moisture in your brush because you're laying it down and then you're just kind of walking your paint or scooting it over into that water. So I put another layer on the nose. Oh my gosh, so cute. So cute. A little bit more in the ears here. We're gonna add some highlight in the ears when we highlight the nose. He is so cute. Now, on the antlers, if that white is just too much for you. I'm going to tell you how you can fix that. Take some of your burnt umber and create a little bit of a wash. And you can go in here and just wash over the white. You'll keep your highlights, but it'll tone them down. Blend them more with the colors that are in the antlers so they're not, you know, like right on top, right on your face. So, okay, let's add a little highlight on the nose. Now with the well, first, let's let's rub some pink in his cheeks. So you're gonna want a dry paper towel, some of your red paint, a dry little brush. This is just a little scruffy type brush. It's a real little one. So we want to put some some pink on his cheekers. Give him some rosy cheeks. And you can go right into the nose with this because it's the same color. Give it a little rub. Ooh, he's so cute. So cute. Okay, for my highlight, I just used um, some white. And so I'm just gonna use my little detail brush. You can use a round brush. And I just did a big line and then a little line and gave him some brightness there. And we'll go out here on the ears and Put a little bit in the ears, just on the outer edge here, and then I just kind of pull a few strokes. Nice fresh paint when you do this, it works best. And again, if that's too bright, you can take some of your red. And, or mix your pink and create a little wash and wash over that white and it'll tone it down just a little bit. Okay, let's do his eyes. Um, now I did his eyes on this one with black, but if you're going to use some of the other colors um, in the project, the blue and the leaf green that I'm gonna show you in a minute how to do on this one, because I think it will show up better on this one. You could paint his eyes blue. Um, I think his eyes would be cute blue. There's no blue in the shirt anywhere, so that's really gonna ugly up the sweater. <laughs> I'm all about putting the ugly elements in there that's gonna make it, the elements that's gonna make it seem cute as an ornament, but ugly if you were wearing that on your body. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hi Mary, thanks for coming. It'll be here on my on my channel. You can watch it and work at your leisure. Um, I'm going to make his eyes just blue, bright blue. I might mix a little white in there. And uh, make them just a light blue. So you can draw some eyes on here. They can be any size that you want. It could be a little bit lower. I think that's a little high. Looks like his eyes are on his forehead. So let's try that one again. Let's put his eyes closer to his nose. There we go. And we'll just paint him in with blue. Again, you can make them black, which is what I did on this one. 
So your it's your deer. You do whatever you want. Need some water. I've got a wild little hair on the end of this brush that is like making me insane. I'm gonna have to get my scissors and snip that off. bigger than I want it to be. Yep, I'm going to have to get a different brush, I think. This one has got that wild, wild hair on the end of it. I have to make this eye a little bit bigger. Yep, getting a different brush because that, that one hair on the end of that is not making me happy at all. Now you could, if you've got a dotting tool, you can just dot these eyes on. You can use the back of a paint, the handle of a paintbrush if you've got one that will make the eye the size that you want it to be. You can use an eraser, the you know the end of a pencil eraser, that kind of thing. Not the most perfect eyes, but um, I think they'll be okay. Uh, while the eyes are drying, let's put his mouth on. Now I just painted his mouth on, but you could use an Identa pen and um, draw his mouth on, whatever you feel comfortable doing. So I'm just gonna give him a big reindeer smile. And I'll go ahead and give him some cute little eyebrows while I have the black on my brush. And I'm also gonna give him some little pupils in his eyes. And I may have to draw them in because I know I'm gonna fill the eye up. They don't have to be that big, but I need some water in my brush. And again, you can use an Identa pen. And just draw a couple little black circles in there. Oh, I think he looks cute with blue eyes. Uh, let's give him a little highlight. I'm going to have to erase, erase those uh, pencil lines. I have to make sure my black is dry. Otherwise, I'll just erase the black right off of there. Oh, he looks so cute. So cute. I love him. I love him. He's so cute. Now, like I said, you could put a scarf on him because really, you're basically done. You're done painting him. There's so few steps to painting this guy. He was the one that had the most votes, so he's the one that I painted. So I'm going to show you um, the other thing that I was going to do on the other one. I had well I'll just actually keep my easel up here and bring it up to the easel um, this one here so I had the idea that he would be cute if he had some ornaments tangled around his antlers so um, if you want to do that you can just like draw a string maybe working its way through his antlers and over the top of his head over to the other antler and just create the look of a string on there. We'll paint that string in. We'll do that first. And I'm going to paint it in with white. So this is the step that is optional. Got some color in my paint there. It's pink. So let me just get some fresh white out because that's got pink in it. Um, this step is optional, but I thought it would be so cute. And uh, then we can uh, add all of the fun stuff onto it, which I did not get my hot glue gun out, so I need to get that heating up. So let me get my my um, wire painted on here. Bring 
it around his antlers. Now you'll want to varnish your, um, you'll want to varnish before you apply this stuff on here. So we've got our string on there. Let me grab my glue gun and get it heating up. to do that and I want it to be hot so I like to varnish now it depends on if you want a gloss varnish on it or a um, matte finish I did mine with an ultra flat so uh, you can make it glossy I think glossy would be pretty or satin whatever you like um, but you want to varnish it before you add all these elements on here so we're going to add some little ornaments on here we're going to use blue and red and green. Now you can use leaf green or mistletoe, either one. I listed, excuse me, leaf green on the um, palette list. So I think this is just really going to ugly up our guy a lot. So we're just going to put some ornaments coming off of his antlers. And... Having them go different directions is a good idea. Just put a little bit of each color in here and then you can go back and see if you want to add any more of any color on here. I think that's all I'll do with green for, for now. I'm going to go to blue and we'll add some blue ones in here can't hardly see that one it's underneath the kind of underneath the fur there oh my gosh how cute now I'm gonna show you on um, One of my other ornaments, my Christmas tree um, ugly sweater ornament that I put um, liquid glass to give the bulbs on the tree some raised element. Oh, why varnish first? Because um, once you get this stuff on, it's kind of hard to varnish around this fur stuff. So you want to varnish first so it's nice and sealed front and back, varnish both sides, your edges, and then you're going to glue on all of your elements. So I'm not going to be doing that since I'm doing it live here, but um, that's what I would normally be doing. I would be um, gluing it down, you know, or putting the varnish on it first. And that way it's all nice and sealed and you don't have to worry about it. Um, the paper is sealed from the decoupage, but you need your paint that you put on top of it to um, be sealed as well. So there's his ornaments. And of course, you know, you want to go back and do a second coat um, to make them nice and bright and stand out on top um, so they're not fading into the background. So just a quick little brush of paint on there. You've already shaped them, so you don't have to um, do too much detail. With the second coat, you're just, second coats on anything, you're just filling in the gaps that the first coat didn't quite manage to fill in. So second coats never generally have to be as heavy as first coats. So just keep that in mind. And then we're just going to give these a little dot of a highlight. And we'll be done with those ornaments now. That really uglied up this one, I think, a lot. So we'll go down here to this white. Just put a little Oops, that was a big dot on that red one. Try not to make them quite that big. Ideally, you want to wait for your paint to dry, which I did not do. And you don't really have to do them all. 
you could add a black line uh, next to your string to kind of give the string a little bit of dimension if you wanted to but I think that really uglied that one up a lot I really I really like that a lot uh, having that on there so um, now we're gonna get ready to add some of the stuff onto this we're gonna hot glue um, you can use E6000 if you have that. I want to show you, while my glue gun's still heating up, I want to show you some of the um, things that you can use on your um, little ornament here. Let me get my palette camera out of the way. Okay, so you can use just some really shiny pipe cleaner. Um, I use that on... Yeah, just one of mine. I used the red pipe cleaner. I just put a single line here and here, and then up here I did two, two lines of it. That kind of goes with his blingy little scarf, which I just painted in red. Um, added some green stripes, and then I put some bling on it. Snowman are really easy. If you have any kind of snowman pattern, perfect. So you can use that. You can use this stuff. Now, I, pretty much all of my stuff I got at uh, Hobby Lobby. Um, this is for their small Christmas trees that they generally have. And, of course, things are going to be so hard to find this year. Um, thanks for coming, Dee Dee. I appreciate you being here. Um, so, you know, a lot of stuff that I've had, I've had for a couple of years. But I know that things are going to be picked over this year because things are just hard to get in but this is some of the decorations that they have in the area where they keep the small Christmas trees and the small ornaments that go on the small Christmas trees I use this on this one it's kind of iridescent and I really liked that so you can use that that is an option and then let me show you some of the other things that I have that you can use. Um, I didn't use it on my ornaments. Well, this is what I used on this guy. Now, I bought this a couple of years ago, probably three years ago, to do a, a beard on a Santa ornament So, because I loved how curly it was. I got this at Michael's, but I was in there yesterday, and they did not have this. And when I used this, I trimmed it. I trimmed all these loopy things off so I could get it to where it just looked like fur. Well, yesterday when I was in there, they had this, which is actually, um, you know, it's more like this. It's a little bit thicker of a wire than what this has in it. This one has a very thin wire in it, whereas this one has a little bit of a thicker wire in it. Um, but this would work beautifully it is giant chanel stem and i got it at um, michael's so this came from michael's too i went there looking for some more of this so i could show you this but uh, they didn't have any more of this um, this is the stuff that is on my bag right here this is a feather boa it came from hobby lobby um, anything that you can find at the dollar store um, I did have some stuff from the dollar store but I could not find it anywhere you could actually use these ornaments and glue them on you know cut the strings a little bit shorter and glue them on the reindeer that would be so cute these beads are already strung together they could be used for around the collar and the bottom and the and the sleeves I mean, really ugly up your sweaters. Come on, I mean, that's what this is. This is an ugly sweater, ugly sweater. Uh, I got some red bows. You could use a red bow up there, but, um, and then just some jingle bells. But um, those are just a few of the, the ways or things that you can use to really um, ugly up your Christmas, ugly Christmas sweater. So there's tons of options out there. You just have to be creative and see something and think, oh, wow, that's going to work. Okay, what am I putting on this one? Um, I think I'm going to put... Do you want me to see... you want to see me put fur on it, or do you want me to see, see me put this stuff on it? Get my wire cutters. I really 
really should have had a piece of this cut ahead of time. So if you have an opinion, let me know. I'm going to grab a piece of this and see how hard it is to cut because it feels like it's pretty thick wire. Okay. So again, you want to varnish this first. And then I'm just going to kind of measure how long that needs to be. cut through all that fur stuff to get to the wire. But this is a thicker wire on here. So we can put that on there and then we can cut a couple of small pieces. I just kind of eyeball it with my fingers here. So there's for my sleeves, and then up here I want to curve it a little bit. I'm going to make it a little bit longer because I can trim the ends off. I'd rather it was a little long where I had to trim it, and um, then it was too short. And then when I curved it around there, it wouldn't fit. So all we got to do now is glue all of our fur pieces on. Oh, the hole in the top. I didn't show you how to do that because you got to have your opening for your wire. And I didn't do it on that one either. So the hole for your wire, I'm going to take a toothpick and poke it through. Okay, then come to the front and find that hole and stick my toothpick in there. And really push that paper in there and get that paper kind of really worked against that hole so we have nice holes in our project. Got to have some way to hang up your wire. So now we're just going to hot glue on all of our fur pieces. And you can trim them down if you need them to be, if you don't want your fur to be quite this fluffy. <laughs> it's pretty fluffy. All right, make sure I'm stuck to the, it's pretty fluffy, so I'm afraid I'm going to go past the ornament here. All right, our sleeves. Oh, yeah, that's looking good. That's definitely an ugly Christmas sweater. Loving it so much. All right, now let's do the top piece up here. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a bend. And it's quite a bit longer than what I actually need. So I'll show you how to trim it up if you make it too big. You still want to be able to get to your um, holes. so. Let's stick in there. Get some more glue. This is definitely a much thicker wire, so I want to make sure I didn't cover up my hole. You want to let it dry good. Let that glue dry good. But you can come and take your cutters and go right up to the edge of your ornament and clip off anything that is extra on there. I need a little more glue under there. There we go. Okay, that one's definitely, oh my gosh, so cute. But if that's too much, all you have to do is trim it, grab your scissors and trim it down. That's all I did with this one. I just took my scissors and trimmed it down so it wasn't quite so fluffy. Oh my gosh, so cute. Love that guy. He is adorable. Adorable. What a fun, ugly Christmas sweater. So that finishes him up. I think uh, you guys are going to have a good time painting him. You could also shade before you add all this stuff on here. Like I did on this one, I shaded around the edges. Let me grab my ankle brush. I'm going to do it 
with uh, everything on here. I think I'm going to go, hmm, green's not dark enough. I'll just do the burnt umber. My burnt umber's getting dry. So we can just go around the edge, more water, and shade the edge of that a little bit, give it a little bit of a stained look. But this part is not necessary if you don't want to um, shade around your edges, you don't have to, but this is something you want to do before you varnish it and before you adhere your all your fuzzy parts that you're going to use to decorate your ornament. I try to use a color that coordinates with the background paper. So just remember to do that. So that's going to finish up this guy right here. This reindeer ugly sweater ornament. Let me get him off the camera. I'm going to make myself a little bit bigger here. If I can click on me. And I want to show you what's coming up next week for our YouTube Live. And I really hope you guys paint some of these up. Tag me on Facebook if you paint some so that uh, I can see what you've done. I love seeing when you do uh, things that I've shown you. So um, it really it really touches my heart. It blesses me so much. So anytime you paint something that I have shown you, um, just go ahead and tag me. And um, sorry about that. I'm trying to get my logo here and move it out of the way there. Okay, so this is what we're doing next week. We are painting these beautiful strawberries. Now you can paint on a four by six or a six by six. This should fit both sizes. This is a gallery wrap canvas. Of course, I will be painting on a four by six next Wednesday, but I'm really trying to mix up the things that I show you how to paint so you can be, um, you can try lots of different things um, and uh, just help yourself grow as an artist. So we're going to be doing this one next Wednesday, um, the same time, 1 p.m. Central. Um, I don't think I have you other than make sure your surface is white. Um, if you're painting on a canvas, it's already white and then have, have your uh, strawberry shapes painted on because we're going to do the background and everything together. So um, this will be next week. And I also wanted to remind you guys that um, I have a 25% off sale on my website, lanalam.com. It does not include Zoom classes or other artist um, packets, but um, anything else on my website is fair game for the 25% off because it's my birthday month. I will be 59 next Thursday, so I am giving you 25% off. Um, the code is capital B, capital D, capital Y, 59. It's good to the end of August. 2021. So uh, get over there and shop around if you'd like. And um, I appreciate you guys being here. I can't wait to paint these strawberries with you next time. And I have such a great idea of one that I want to paint soon. I'm hoping I can uh, get it up for one of the September classes, but oh my gosh, it's going to be fun. It's going to have water. If I can get it to work out for what I'm painting, um, we will do that one as a live. It is going to be so much fun. So uh, I can't wait to see you guys next week. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and uh, I will get to those. Or you can always tag me on Facebook. Uh, my Facebook page is uh, Lana Lamb Designs. So you could head over there and um, like my page or follow my page. And uh, then you can leave comments on there and I can get back to you. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. I had a great day painting with you and I can't wait to see what ugly Christmas sweater ornaments you paint up. I'll see you next week, everybody, on the next live painting these delicious strawberries. Have a wonderful and blessed day and the remainder of your week.